Hi, welcome to today's video. What I'm going to do today is kind of a little different. I have my Millsbo cabinet over here and out of the way a little, you can see a little bit of the detolf here. I have another detolf just slightly out of camera view here. But what I think I'm going to do today is I'm going to take these these plants out of this cabinet and out of the details. I'm going to rearrange them. I'm going to talk a little bit about them just briefly as I get them out of the cabinet. Um, we're going to do that together. And then after I get all the plants out of the cabinet, I will fast forward putting them back in um, because I will just have a camera um, more trained on the uh, plants cabinet than on me. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider hitting the like button. Um, that lets me know where I need to make uh, more footage at. If you would like to see other plant related content from me, please consider hitting the subscribe button. That way you won't miss anything. And if you have anything to say or to add to the conversation, please put it in the comment section below. I do interact with my comment section, so I will be getting back to you soon. So now on with the cabinet. Now the first cabinet I have is this Millsbow cabinet. I've had this cabinet for about two, about two years now. And I'll show you a glimpse of what it looks like all the way down to the bottom. It's pretty packed in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these plants that are trellised really high on the top. I'm going to take everything out. I'm going to take everything out of the details too. And then we're going to go ahead and and remove them or rearrange them. So the first plant I'm taking out is the Nervosa. And it's getting a little wild again. It's got some new leaves, which is always good. Um, it's got a new growth point. I would like to take this Nervosa out of the, the um, Millsbo cabinet. The only exception is that it got a peduncle and I would really like to see if I can get it to bloom. Um, if the peduncle did not blast off. This plant started off as three leaves and it just grew and grew and grew and now it's on a wire trellis that is really too small for it. Um, these leaves are getting massive big. Oh, there's there's a, uh, there's a uh, peduncle right there. So these leaves have gotten really too big to still stay in the cabinet. So I think I'm gonna move it out um, to a less humid cabinet. Plus it's got a couple of leaves that are yellow, so that remains to be seen. This is my Crassy Petiolata Splash. Um, a lot of you will see that this is new because I just potted this up in a video. And as you can see, it's already got roots coming out the side. This is a rapid grower. As you can see, it's already got new leaves growing. We'll try to tuck that in. So this pot is really impressive, but unfortunately because I had to put it on the tall trellis, it doesn't really fit in anymore. So I'm going to have to probably put it on a shelf somewhere if I can't find a spot. This is my species Bahoy, which it looks like it's, it's finally getting Looks like it's finally getting a uh, new roots back. Um, I need to change its water. That is still doing same old, same old. This 
This is way, my Waymonii Cloudy Sky. And I got it with these two leaves. And it grew these two. And it's growing this one with this little guy right in the back. And I couldn't be so excited. Um, this is kind of a slow grower, but I have it kind of in the back of the cabinet and it's just doing fine. I'm just politely ignoring it and it's politely growing for me. Bunch of dead sticks. That deserved a place. Okay, now we're into the Kadata. This should have a peduncle on it somewhere and it got, the peduncle got kind of smushed somewhere. So now I gotta try and find the peduncle. I hope the peduncle didn't fall off. It has several new leaves. Hmm. That's not good because that means that the peduncle might have fallen off. I have a leaf right here that's majorly thin. So I got some roots that are not growing in yet. So I'm a little worried about this one. Um, some of the leaves feel pretty thin. Some of the leaves feel paper thin. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this and see what happens. I may have to take this apart, at least part of it, and water root it because this, this stem right here, as you can see, you can just bend it. And there's one behind here that's just the same. So the Kadata, big green leaves, don't know where the peduncle went to. Obviously it blasted off. Um, so we'll see what happens. These are new Nova Ghost cuttings my daughter gave me um, because mine wouldn't root up. Hers rooted up, so I need to pot these up. This is a cutting that I took that had no node, uh, no stem. So it's actually grown since then. It's grown a, it's grown a stem. Um, it grew one leaf that had, it grew up against a, a light, so it was damaged. But it's got a new leaf right there. And it's got a new leaf right there. So... So it needs to be repotted. Vitalinoides, that's what it is. Oh my goodness, look at my Pistolopsis. Pistolo, Pistolepsis. Look at my Pistolepsis. Look at those roots that have formed within about two weeks of me having this. Can you believe those roots? Look at those roots, look at all those roots. Oh my gosh, that is so exciting. So now I have one root, one cutting rooted, so now let, I'll later check out to see the other root cutting, and so then I can pot them up together. Okay, here's my Fitchii. It's getting pretty sun-stressed, so I think what I'm probably gonna do is wrap this around and then put this in another location. This is my Hush Kiliana Inner Variegated. Um, I just potted this up, up potted this in a recent video. Um, it's doing very well. It's got new growth, new growth. Um, it bloomed right at the base of the plant. Smells like buttered popcorn or butterscotch popcorn. No roots yet dipping into the pot, but it's still really early. And the most exciting plant on this top shelf is my Thomsonii. Because as you see, it's not just the Thomsonii, it's all the blooms 
on the Thomsonii. Keep going. Keep going. And keep going. So that's my Thomsonii. So it's currently planted in tree fern fiber and it's loving it. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six peduncles that have actual buds on them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six that actually have peduncles on them. So that's the most that that one's bloomed on me. So now we got rid of the first shelf. So now let's go ahead and go down a little to the second shelf. This is my high light shelf. This is a cutting I uh, took for someone. Um, could use a little water. This is my carry eye cutting. And it's got new leaves right on the edge here and a new growth point. So that's exciting. Here is my micro dwarf. It's really sun bleached, so I think I'm gonna put it in a darker cabinet because that's just too, too sun bleached. And this is another cutting that's got some great roots, if you can see. This is the Annika Genoe, if I can spell that right. It looks very similar to a Rosita. It's pubescent. Um, but it's got some nice, nicely, nice roots in there. So that's pretty awesome. This is my Snow Sweet Silver. Um, this has been allowed to kind of trail uh, amongst the, the tank, or I'm sorry, amongst the stand. And it's just growing, growing, growing. So, and it produces the most amazing silver or silvery purple leaves. This is my Lacanosa inner variegated. Um, as you can see, some of it over here became reverted, which I still need to um, take care of that. But the rest of it is beautiful. It's in tree fern fiber now. Um, I'm not sure if it likes that or not. It hasn't really grown since, so I may put it... I may put it back in pond. Some more Hoyas with some great roots. This is the Lacanosa Snow Leopard. Um, looks like there is a new growth point right there in the middle. So that's good. Hopefully that means that something's coming up, shooting up for me new. This is a plant that is kind of having a hard time growing with me. Um, it has no new growth. This is the Croniana. I'm gonna have to put the name on the, on the bottom. I just drew a blank on it. It's the Croniana Super Silver Black, I think is the name of it. And it's not that super silver right now and it's not that black. It's kind of a, a faded mint yellow with some silvery overtones. So I don't know if this means that my plant is just not healthy right now and it'll turn black when it gets healthy. Um, but even a healthy root, a healthy leaf like right here doesn't look like a Croniana black silver. This is my Chang Hung, Tang Hungensis and with another leaf going away. I am trying to grow this. I do have the tiniest little growth point available right there. Um, but for so far, it's lost about six leaves. Um, I'm hoping I don't lose any more, you know, 
It's kind of a bummer when that happens. This is just an alocasia corm I have to water, see what happens. This is a variegated Walliniana cutting. It could stand some water. It started with one leaf and now it's got one, two, three, four. Now it's got five leaves if the newest leaf will grow. Okay, now this one's a sad one uh, and it needs to get out of this, this big giant cup. This is a Deshidia Harutsu. Harutsu. Um, but I tried to make it a shingling plant along the bottom and I had a much bigger plant. But if you can see, it's got some very new leaves right at the base. So right there. So maybe not, all's not lost with that plant. This is one of my favorite plants right now. This is the Hoya AH Black Magic. And if you didn't know why it was called Black Magic, I'm sure you can see by it now. It sun stresses very, very dark. It's not a purple, it's a black. So I got this about two and a half months ago and I put it under high grow lights and I definitely got the black. So that's pretty neat. And one Hoya testing my patience is this Hoya clemenciorum. I had it rot, I uh, retrellised it. Um, I had some issues. So it's kind of, a, kind of a difficult Hoya for me right now. Um, it's ungainly, it needs a trellis, but it doesn't really have much to hang on a trellis. But it's got these nice five leaves. Um, I wish it would grow more. Um, it did grow more, but I had to cut them off. So that is the second shelf in the Mills Bow. So let me go ahead and redo the camera and we'll get a little lower for the rest of the, of the, of the plants. Okay, we're down on shelves three and four. So now these are, the sh these are a little larger plants. Okay, so now we have the Meridithii, which is kind of going everywhere. Um, I do want to trellis it. Look, it's got, it's got a beautiful new leaf. I won't touch because it will fall off. Mer Meridithii are very sensitive with new leaves, I've found. But what I would like to do is I would like to get this on some sort of a trellis. You know, I don't know if that's gonna be possible. I may have to take everything out of the pot and replant it. But my Meridithii, I, I had to cut it up because it got, it got root rot. Um, or did it get root mealies? I forget which one. I'll put it down at the bottom. Um, but it's been doing really good since I cut it up. And you can see, you can see the, roots come out of the pot and you can see them growing in the substrate really well. So I would call that a success. Now all I need to do is get it trellis because this huge hydra of a plant, not good. Next is my Rinsey from Borneo. Um, it could definitely go in a better spot. It's got this nice long growth point um, that I don't oh, that I don't want to have anything happen to it. And what did I do? I just bent it right at the node. Now this one has tied itself onto the back.
Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness, my GPS 7240 has a peduncle. I didn't even notice it, oh my gosh. That is so exciting. And it's really developing too. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so excited. I had no idea that that was going on. So let me go ahead and corral the leaves on the stem real fast. Here is the peduncle on my GPS 7240. Um, it's had some chances to develop and uh, it does look like it's gonna go ahead and go to maturity. I will have to make sure that the plant is kept moist at all times. And as you can see, the roots look good. The roots look good. They're poking out of the, out of the net, the net pot. So we always like to see that. This is a little cutting, looks like a uh, Sipitagensis and a Hushkiliana green. These are two Kadata gold cuttings. I grew roots, one in water and one in soil, just to see how it would work. The one in water rooted faster, but the one in tree fern fiber rooted very well too. Um, I see roots in that. So that's, that's one plant I have to pot up into a bigger pot. I have a few that I have to pot up. Here is some cuttings of my Crassy Petty a lot of splash that uh, we're not gonna do anything for since the last time I cut the plant. Um, I had some cuttings that I had nowhere to put them so I put them in water and it doesn't even look like they're rooting so let me check the stem. Stem, stem looks good, stem looks good. Stems all look good. So I'm just gonna put them right back in the water and let them let them hopefully root a little more later over time. But the cuttings feel good. They don't feel dehydrated or anything. This is my Griffithii. And unfortunately, when I, um, when I trellised it, all the leaves that were on this part of the trellis they all died off, which is really disappointing to me. Um, so I'm going to loosen them up and keep them open. They're not dead, they're still viable stems. I'm just gonna not, not have them trail down the bottom of the U yet because that I dropped like five leaves off of this part right here. And I don't really wanna do that again. So we will see if I can do this on my lab. Oops, dropped some pawn. So this is where I'm left at with the Griffithii. As you can see, it's still got a yellow leaf right here from being trellised up so I'm not sure if that one's gonna how that one's gonna do yet so we'll see but this is the Griffith yeah this was the first time that it was ever trellised so I can see how it threw a hissy fit because it just wasn't used to that but I'm hoping these grow and I can wrap them around the bottom and up pretty soon so that's the Griffithii. This is my Tequila Sunrise. Um, it's looking pretty good. The roots are good. The roots are out out of the out of the bottom cup. They feel fairly good. It was trellis on kind of a tight trellis, kind of a small trellis. I like to trellis it on something larger, but 
Right now, I just don't have the room. So this will stay somewhere in the cabinet. Okay, this is my latifolia from Sarawak. It is on a wire hoop trellis, but that is more, it's not really winding anything around anything. It's more just holding stems that are sticking straight up and maybe a couple that are winding around. Um, what I'd like to do on this is I'd like to eventually, um, oh, look at those roots. Look at those roots. Feel good, just feel a little dirty on the end. Those roots look awesome. So what I'd like to do ideally is to get a large truck, a large uh, ladder trellis and put this behind it so that way I can hook up. But the ladder trellis I have right now is kind of small. So um, I definitely have that on the list for something to do. It's just gonna have to be at a later date. Here is my Pista Lopsis from my daughter's cutting to go along with the one that I got that was well rooted. This one feels rooted too. I don't see any roots on the outside of the cup, but when I give the tug test, it pulls up the whole shebang of roots. So that tells me it's pretty much almost rooted. This has got to be changed. This is my, uh, this is my Sulawesiana. And I tried putting it on a bamboo or a, a circular trellis. And as you can see, it doesn't like it. So I'm just taking it off that right now. It wants to, if it wants to hang, it wants to hang. I mean, I probably could try to trellis something around like this, maybe like a wire, like a ladder trellis, but let's take that off for now because that's not doing us any good. Here is a juggernaut. This is my Rotunda flora. Just checking the roots. The roots, the roots look good. Checking my rotunda flora because it's got some, you know, it's got some damaged leaves. It also has some penuncles. It just bloomed that fell off. So this is going pretty good. It needs to be retrellis, as you can see, it's falling off. And oh, look, there's another peduncle right there. So it needs it needs to be retrellised around. I'm just going to kind of wrap it willy nilly for now. Just to get it. just to get what I need it to do. I'll just kind of course it in between and in, that, in and out of stuff. So what are these plants that I have do you have? Um, what, which ones are your favorites? Which ones give you hassle? Uh, which ones of these do you have suggestions for me on? Um, I can always use suggestions. And I got this Finley Sonii. It's still in soil. I need to take it out and uh, put it in into pond. Um, but it's got these two new leaves right there. So it's 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 so well rooted in this that you can't. It's just going to come out one large brick. So I'm thinking of putting it into tree fern fiber. Um, since it's got such a long-term history with soil, I think it would do a lot better in the tree fern fiber. Okay, just a couple more plants. This is, this is my undulata, or what's left of it. Um, if you've seen my plant chores video, 
you'll know that I uh, went to fix this plant and it turned out that the stem was dead. So I had to cut, 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 and keep on cutting. And that's what's left of my, of my uh, undulata. This is, this is what's left. So it's got the little tiny stem and that's pretty much it. I think I can revive it. I think so. This is a dachyae. This is, it's not really, I mean, it's not really blowing my skirt up by its roots, but it is a, a nice dachyae. It's got lots of cuttings in here. This is, this is a cuttings. Uh, when I chops when I chopped up my my uh, dachyae, I just put all the cuttings in here, and everything's doing really good so far. Um, this is just a cute little plant. And the last plant in this is one of my favorites. This is my kegaginensis. But look at these look at these leaves. Look at those gorgeous leaves. Look at those gorgeous leaves right there with the with the purple. And these these gorgeous leaves right here with the purple. Uh, this plant looks like an anthurium. It has an anthurium like sheen on it. Um, it grows and grows and grows in high humidity and high light. I don't want a peduncle. Um, it does, it just, it just produces leaf after leaf after leaf. I, I took a picture of this plant before I put it in the cabinet so you can see how much it really has grown. Okay, so that is the Millsbow cabinet. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and push plants out of the way. I'm gonna reposition the camera. I'm gonna go into the details now. Okay, we had a little bit of a lapse while I could fix my camera. So now we're on to my high humidity detolf. Um, this is the detolf I put things in that like more humidity. And like this Spartioides that's dry as a bone, um, I definitely got to water that. We'll put that one right there. And just another uh, little uh, Rotunda Flora for... Uh, for trading purposes, I should probably put that in the cut, cuttings box. Now this is what's left, there's more of it, but this is what's left off the stem from my Ben Vergari. Um, this is a really pretty plant. It's got, you know, this one leaf that, that got uh, grew up against the side, but this has got great leaves. I got the rest of the plant rooting down at the bottom. Um, I am gonna hopefully Join it with its, with the rest of its plant cousins, with the rest of the cuttings. I don't see any roots so far, um, but it's too early. This is my Lacanosa No ID. Um, I don't think it's got any peduncles that are blooming right now. But what this is, is this is a Lacanosa that will sun stress black. So I got this as a Lacanosa black, though I don't think it is. Um, but it's a really beautiful plant. It grows like mad. Um, I don't really see any roots too much. Maybe one right there, a nice healthy one right there. Um, but it's growing fast and uh, it really likes the cabinet right here. This is my Globulosa. Um, this one's kind of struggling for me right now. Um, it's got some, it's got some yellow leaves, like right there is yellow, right there is yellow. Um, it's got great roots, so it's not the roots. Um, I do believe it has something to do with bending the stem. It's got some peduncles, as you see, it's got a peduncle right here. Um, it's got a peduncle right here. And it's got one right here. So it's got three peduncles, but it's not really doing anything yet. So I'd like for this to become healthy. Uh, this is just kind of uh, stuck in the corner of the 
cabinet right now. I'm too afraid to bend it. I don't want it to drop. So that's my Globulosa. On to the second shelf. This is my Colina IR26. Um, this has been doing really good for me. There's, there's a, whoop, that root is rotted. Um, I did restart this, this Hoya, so it is kind of in the depths of being restarted again. As you can see, there is the cutting, and I just need to get this trellis to sit in here more so that it would be more uh, safe for the plant. Maybe I'll do this. So this is my IR26. As you can see, it produces really large leaves on top. That one's really sappy. It produces really large leaves on top when it's exposed to light. It's a really beautiful plant. Just a little cutting of an elliptica. Um, you'll see more of that in a little bit. This is my New Guinea Ghost. It has kind of stopped producing leaves. The roots look good on the outside of the pot, so Maybe it's just, woo. Oh no. Oof. That smells. That smells like decay. I need to go and run that through peroxide. That don't smell good. This is my Ganungadding after I took several cuts from it. Um, no roots in that yet either. Um, I did have a decaying leaf fall off it. It was in the it was in the soil or the substrate, and it just uh, got rotted. But this these leaves feel a little thin right now, so the roots are probably having a little bit of a difficulty. Um, but the bottom leaves feel really firm. This may just be a, a new leaf still. But this is my Gadungadding. This is my Verticillata Heart Leaf Splash. And this has got a lot of trellising that needs to be done um, because the plant is literally growing up everywhere. So I'm going to just grab some branches real fast, just kind of do a little bit of a Quick job, just harnessing these. So I got that kind of regrouped a little. So as you can see, this is a pretty splashy uh, Verticillata Hartley splash. Um, it's got some nice pink splashes there. It's got some very splashy leaves on the other end, got a, a little bit of edema right there. But it's a good plant. This is my Rosita. It uh, hasn't really grown much. It's on a trellis and it's doing good. So maybe I can put this outside somewhere out of the cabinet. And this is the Enduensis. And I'm afraid to pull on it because I'm afraid it's not going to be rooted yet. But I've been trying to root this for, I don't know, maybe five months now. And it's just not doing anything. And the, the stem at the end has died. So that explains why nothing new is growing. Okay, got that. So we just put this on, maybe we'll put this on the short shelf over there. This is a Rosita that I got as a little gift a long time ago. It's got some new, new leaves down here, I see. This is my Han Hye. 
and I really like this plant because it's hard to hard to appreciate it backwards but fours it's just got so many leaves and it it is so pretty it needs a larger trellis is what it needs that got most of the stems tucked in together so i like this plant i don't know what version of the han hay this is but um, it's got some really big leaves and i think it's just a great plant this is my oval folia which has now been transferred to a different subspecies which i can't think of off the top of my head so i'll put that on the screen and i am just kind of wrapping these up real fast. I got the ovifolia retrellised up kind of tight there real fast. It's a pretty plant. It um, grows pretty fast. It, it has kind of a purplish tinge when it's uh, when it is sun stressed. So it's a really pretty plant. It's kind of a dupe for uh, like a GPS 7240. Now we're just getting into the, the cuttings. This is a cutting from the Ben Vergari I showed you earlier. This unfortunately is all that's left of my elliptica and it definitely needs water. Okay, take away a cutting or two because I had to throw some away as I got water. Uh, this, this plant kind of got destroyed so I'm restarting it all over again uh, as you can see it's got pest damage um, it's got it's got uh, light damage so we'll see what happens with that this is my Hishkiliana green or well actually this is a Hishkiliana pink but as you can see this is the the uh, unvarigated green form and it has produced flowers for me before. It has bloomed, so that's always really exciting. And the last plant from this cabinet is my Marillii. Um, it's got this, but it's got two, sorry, this is my Marillii for the last plant in this cabinet. I would normally tie this down and, and bring this around and loop it, but it's got two new leaves right there. So I don't want to waste, I don't want to ruin those leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it out. That was the whole detolve number one, the high humidity detolve. Now I'm going to turn you around and we're going to look at detolve number two, which is the low humidity detolve. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and clean the cabinets and put everything back. Okay, now we're on my low humidity detail. And we have a few plants here, fewer plants than the other shelf. But we got some definite favorites in here. And the first one is this Inglariana. And I love it. It trails so far. Um, I've seen some other people's Anglerianas and they kind of stick out like octopi. Um, and this one uh, seems to got the trailing bug and I'm glad. This one may not follow its suit, but it's really starting to take a shape. And I just love the, long, the short leaves. This is the subspecies Vietnam. This is the species that is the easier to grow, that has the, I believe it's the larger leaves, um, that Doug from Vermont, Ho Doug Chamberlain from Vermont Hoy has talked about. Um, this is in fer tree fern fiber and perlite in a no drainage pot, needs to be ordered, watered. And another trailing plant in tree fern fiber, um, this one a little less needing to be watered, is my Linearis. And I kind of have a struggle bus relationship with this Linearis. Um, it likes to shoot out things like this, these stems with no growths on them. 
Um, and then some leaves at the end. It's not losing leaves, it's just not growing them. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been cutting them back and um, propagating them. That's what I've been doing. And as you can see, they're starting to come back. But I may propagate this one, cut it off right there, then um, propagate this right here, stick it in the pot, and go on that way. That's probably what I'm going to do when I'm off camera. This is my Svetlana, also in tree fern fiber and uh, perlite. And I am so excited to say that I got this for my birthday last year, October last year, and it is just now producing its first leaf, uh, its first new leaf in my care. These um, I had to chop into two. This was one cutting that I divided, um, and the first cutting is putting out its first leaf in my care. Miro from Basy Plant says that um, <clears throat> that this plant is really slow, so I definitely believe him. This is my uh, Croniana Black, and it's looking sad since I messed with its roots. So this is gonna have to come out and we're gonna have to work on it. Yes, this is the one from the video. Uh, you know, sometimes we do things that make the plants worse. Um, you know, what can I say? The rest of the plants look great though. Okay, this is my splashy Matilde. Um, we got some nice roots going there. This one is one of my only ones that is still in pond, believe it or not. Um, it is not the fastest grower, which is why I need to get it out of pond. Um, but it's, it's just so easy, laid back and easy going. It's like the Bob Marley of my plants. Um, so... It does have a peduncle going right now, right here. So that's always nice. Um, you know, it will massively stink up my, my cabinet when it blooms. They smell perfectly awful. Um, I won't tell you what the scent smells like, but it's really bad. I'll hop down a, a shelf because this is my regular um, Matilde. As you can see, there's not really much splash on it. It's got a lot more growth. Um, the leaves are smaller, um, but it's got, it's got a few more peduncles on it. There's one right down here in the back. Um, but it's, it's grown a lot. I received this as a two leaf, one node cutting from a dear friend uh, to get me into Hoyas. And I root rotted that thing so many times. It stayed two leaves for about eight months. And I would, I would get it rooted and then I would rot it and then I would get it rooted and then I would rot the stem and oh, I could not get it. Um, but this is that plant. And it, it stands to, it serves to remind me that yes, I can root plants, but what's terrible is this plant has root rot now. Um, this plant, <laughs> it, it likes to hurt me. And the last is some cuttings of um, Sigillatus. I ended up deciding to take cuttings after repotting it when the roots rotted. Um, the leaves were thin to begin with, um, and they, I just didn't trust them to stay thin, thick enough to live through a rooting process in pond. I thought that if they, these were gonna root, the only way they were gonna stay hydrated and root was gonna be through water. So I have them in water right now. They are much firmer than they were when I put them in. But even before I messed with them, they were thinner than this. So this is what I got right now. 
and I don't know if that is a peduncle or a stem. Looks like a stem. So we're gonna put these aside. The first one out of this next shelf is the Finlaysonii Black. Um, the growth, the stem has just been tied in a circle because I haven't had time to repot it or put it on a trellis or anything. Uh, the growth tip is still alive. The very end of it is not actively growing. Um, it's a really nice plant. It's growing in soil right now, which means that I'll probably transfer it to, you know, um, tree fern fiber. We'll see how it does. And this is my Walliniana. Now, this has been through the ringer. Um, let's just say that. Um, it does have some pitted leaves, which I do believe is from edema. Um, let me see if I find something like this one right here is pitted. Um, this one right here is pitted. Um, but I've tried to not let it get so sun stressed this time. I got this as a two node, two leaf, one node cutting as a free cutting along with the purchase of the Croniana Black that you just saw, which was also a cutting. Um, I grew this out and it was beautiful and it was sun stressed and then uh, I rotted it, the, the stem rotted at the base. So I took cuttings and these are what's left. So I'm trying to reestablish the plant. Um, it's starting to get some roots outside of the pot, which is a good thing. This is my Sipatikensis. Um, as you can see, part of it is sun stressed, part of it is not, and that is because um, this is uh, about three cuttings, three plants potted up into one. Um, I combine them all. Um, this cutting right here may or may not be a Sipatengensis. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I seem to have, I seem to remember that I put a Hushkiliana regular in here somewhere. So um, good luck finding that for me. But this is really beautiful. I had to pot this all in one pot from cuttings that I took after uh, the plant wasn't doing that well. So the roots are still developing on it, but the plant is doing really great. This is my arena. Um, you may also recognize it um, from the same video as the Croniana over there that has some issues. Um, this uh, Irina actually suffered the same fate that the Angelata did, and that was that the stem was woody and dead and did not have any sap, even though there were roots on it. Um, I am not the only person to have that happen to. Miro from Daisy Plants just posted a video about that. Um, so what I did was after I saw his video on that, I realized that this is a truly a dead stem at the base of my plant and the plant is not going to survive off of that stem. So I took it out and I chopped it up into cuttings and some of the cuttings were pretty, pretty thin. Uh, they still are, um, but they've thickened up quite a bit. So um, that's where I'm at with the Irina. Um, the, the cutting that has the the woody, barky that you can peel off stem. Um, it's in here. Um, it hasn't died yet. It hasn't, um, I'm just gonna keep it in here and see what it does. So that's my Irina. This is a very, <laughs> 
a very sad croniana that I just had to pluck two dead leaves off of. This looks like it hasn't been watered in a very long time. I will water it. It's a regular croniana. Um, I have some regular croniana over there, so um, it may eventually join its mates. Now this is something that is coming out of this cabinet, if I can get it. And when I say is coming out, I mean is permanently coming out. And that is this Callistophylla. And this is a beautiful plant. It, it blooms all the time and you can't really see it from in the back, in the front, but you can in the back. Whoop, leaf fell off. It's, it's got blooms right back there. It's got some fallen leaves I need to take care of. It's got blooms down here. It's got more peduncles over here, over here that just bloomed, that the blooms fell off. It's got a peduncle over here, right back here. Um, and it's got this one that's blooming in the front. See if I am showing you, yeah, there we go this one in the front. So this is a very happy and healthy um, plant. It is in one of these wick and grow plants from uh, Home Depot. I look like I need to water this. I am gonna take this out to uh, give more room for some of my other plants that are coming out of the Millsbow. Um, this plant does very well in ambient room humidity, and I think it will be nice to enjoy the blooms. Now the bottom shelf. This is a little group of Wyattii cuttings, variegated Wyattii cuttings, that I took when my um, Hoya Wyattii regular and variegated had a whole bunch of root damage. These are some of the uh, the good ones that are left. Um, they're just kind of hanging on. They're not really doing too much. So I wonder if they might still have mites maybe because they're not really growing at all. So this is my Fuwa Ensis and this is like takes the cake for my absolute most slowest growing Hoya I have. Um, this, this is actually dead right there. Um, it did not produce any new leaves for the longest time, so I sprayed it with bug spray. And then it produced this leaf right here, which is still very soft. And it produced this extremely wonky leaf, which is still very soft. Um, all the rest of the the leaves are firm and cardboard-like. Um, this one's fairly new to the touch. It's still cardboardy, but it's it's green and shiny. Um, you know, I do I care about Fuansis? Maybe I would if it grew tall and beautiful and strapped around wrapped around a trellis. But as it stands right now. It's not Spark and Joy. This is a Wilbur Graves China that my daughter gave to me. And it is just spouting off the growth. I love it. Every time I look at it, it's got new leaves. I, it's got such splash. The splash seems very stable. Um, so I'm very excited to see what this entails as it grows larger. Almost done. Oh no, uh-oh. We got a sneaky one here. We got one, Let's see. It wrapped itself all the way through to right there. Thankfully, these walls can be pushed aside so I don't lose 
any leaves. This is my fungi. This is one leaf from my fungi. That monster leaf right there, hold, hold it next to my hand. Um, it only grew two, a few leaves after that. Let me try and wrap, wrap these up. Okay, got that very tipsy trellis trellised up. I do have a couple of big dark leaves right there. And I got a growth tip that just wants to escape. So this has been, these are the newest two leaves right here, which are nice. I've had this plant, oh, these are also the other two new leaves right down here. They're very beautiful looking. Those are probably the two nicest leaves I've had other than this big giant one that got produced when there was no dark, no light. And unfortunately it has an, an error in it. It grew next to the stem, next to the trellis, so it had a dip in it. Let me look at this. This is my species affinity Bertoniae. I know that everybody probably has big, huge pots of theirs. I don't. I have just a little, little tiny trellis of it. Um, it hasn't uh, bloomed for me yet or anything like that. It's still in its producing stages, producing leaves stages. Um, I've had several instances where it's produced really dark sets of leaves and really tiny leaves inside that. And then, uh, you know, it came to me with these really deep, dark, these deep spade shaped leaves. So it's been, it's been fun watching this grow. See, here's new leaves and see how they're fun, funny shape and they're really tiny and they're really red. So that's it. And other than that, I have a dead uh, alocasia. Thank you. 